CERN, home to the currently largest particle collider of the world, the Large Hadron Collider, wants to build an even bigger collider. They call it the Future Circular Collider, and at this point I give it an 80% probability it'll not come into existence. The Future Circular Collider, FCC for short, would have a ring tunnel with about 91 kilometers circumference. It's a two-phase project. The first one, called the FCCEE, would collide electrons and specifically measure the properties of the Higgs boson. Then there'd be an upgrade to the FCCHH that would collide protons at energies up to 85 tera electron volt, or maybe somewhat more if magnet technologies improve. That's about six times more than what the LHC reaches. Last week, CERN published their feasibility study for the FCC, which, well, found it's feasible. The total costs almost certainly exceed $40 billion, and the thing wouldn't start operation until the mid-2070s. What would it do for us? Well, it'd measure some properties of the Higgs and make more precise measurements for some of the other known particles. One can't exclude the possibility that it'd find something new, but there are no open problems in the standard model that require a solution in this energy range. So chances are it won't find anything new. The FCC risks tying up thousands of the most intelligent people on the planet in what's ultimately a waste of time and money, and it'd likely stall progress in the foundations of physics for another 50 years. This is, in a nutshell, why I've been against these plans and I haven't changed my mind, despite persistent emails from people who think the Higgs boson holds the key to immortality. What has changed, however, is that now there are other physicists speaking out against the FCC too. The particle physicist Halina Abramovich, for example, said in a recent interview with The Guardian, what worries me most is that by investing all this money, we'll be stopping the development of other technologies because there'll be no money for them. The FCC could soak up funds for years and years. The physicist Olivier Separt told AFP, the financial, ecological and operating costs are astronomical. It'd be better to fund small smaller scientific projects. In an interview with Nature, particle physicist Ruben Sakyan said that people inside the community do say the FCC is really the current CERN director's vision which has been pushed forward. And according to the same article, some researchers told Nature they felt pressured to back the FCC to help present a unified front to the outside world. This doesn't surprise me because I've had to endure a lot of personal attacks Thanks for voicing my concerns about the FCC. I'll do a longer video about this. For today, let me just explain why I think the FCC plan is dead on arrival. One major problem is that CERN's annual funding isn't sufficient to finance the FCC. They want to increase member state contributions, but then they still need about 5 billion euros on top of that. It's currently unclear where that money is supposed to come from, and seeing the current economic situation in the EU, it's going to be difficult. A member of the German Ministry for Science and Education said already last year that Germany isn't going to pick up the bill, quite possibly because Germany is choking on a collider project on its own, which is 10 years behind schedule and by now a stunning 3 billion euro above budget. Last month, 400 French scientists signed a petition against the FCC, citing environmental concerns. My personal impression is that most particle physicists are more excited about a different type of new collider, that it'd be a linear muon collider. It'd be smaller and cheaper and come online faster. We've never had a muon collider before, so that's new territory already from the engineering perspective. In a recent archive paper, a survey among early career particle physicists revealed indeed that they're most excited about the muon collider. And then there are the Chinese, who plan a collider very similar to CERN's FCC. It's also a ring collider of about the same size, would reach about the same collision energy, and it's also a two-stage project. The first would be an 
electron-positron collider designed to study the Higgs and then an upgrade to what they call the super-proton-proton -proton collider. They, they say it had reached 125 TeV, so that's somewhat more than the FCC. But the Chinese say they can do it at less than half the cost and 20 years faster. If they go ahead with their plan, this will make the FCC obsolete before it's even done. And it looks likely that it's going to happen. The Chinese government will make the decision with their next five-year plan that's due in 2026. But at a conference in January, a Chinese researcher said that in preliminary evaluations, the Collider plans rank top among 15 proposals under consideration in the high energy category. So I think the Chinese will go ahead, CERN will let it go, and we'll see a muon collider instead. But who knows, maybe the FCC will come into existence after all. I mean, who can resist a slogan that says, the most expensive way to get a slightly better measurement of a particle discovered in 2012. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.